Yeah. So let's dive in. So this is Bran one. Now it's been a while since we were with Bran, but now Mira and Jojen are there and we're kind of getting ready to really go start diving into that. Uh, so here we go. So Bran one while hiding in the Tumbleton tower, Bran gains the ability to open his third eye at will become summer. Jojen again, warns him not to spend too much time as summer, neglecting his body and forgetting what he should do when in contact with his dire wolf. They have been traveling North, staying away from civilizations for fear that Bran might be seen, especially by the iron men or Bolton men. Jojen insists they will make for the wall so that Bran can find the three eyed crow because Jojen can teach him him no more one thing that struck me with this read of this chapter is just how like kind of creepy jojen is overall like green eyes and shaggy hair it just just a lot more daunting i think in the book doesn't it you know the more i the more i read about them does it seem you know not that i immediately want to start diving into like tower of joy stuff and stuff <laughs> but the more you read about mira and jojen doesn't it seem like they are not related Am They're I very am I different? I mean, am I I mean maybe I'm reading too much into it, or maybe I'm just trying to make some theories work, but <laughs> I just feel like the more I read chapters with them, they just don't it just doesn't seem to click as their brother and sister. <clears throat> they are very polar opposites, but I also think that we could look at someone like Tyrion and Cersei and maybe make the same same kind of uh suggestion. But the the one thing that's certainly clear is that Jojen is kind of haunted in, in a way. And one of the things I really like about A Song of Ice and Fire is that the magic is not really well explained, but the consequences are pretty obvious, right? Blood magic always ending uh, in some sort of sacrifice, king's blood, all this stuff. And Jojen happens to have green dreams. And you can just see that this is not something that makes him feel powerful. It's not something that makes him feel good. In fact, it, it almost seems like it's obsessive for him to come and get the winged wolf that's chained down in Winterfell. It, it, it seemed like he had no choice, that he had to go and do these things. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you, Matt, is do you think Jojen was born with this by chance, hereditary? Or do you think that the three-eyed crow chose Jojen. You know, um, I think it's possible and it would be very interesting if that were the case, because then the three eyed crow blood Raven would have chosen two sons of two men who were at the tower of joy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Jojen is significant I mean, because of that. And just the, just the fact that both of them, that happened to be connected to this character is something pretty significant. Yes. And Alan Reed, the crag man is very mysterious. Like we, and we don't have a dime on him at all in this series. And no, Alan Reed, Alan Reed is by far the most intriguing character because he's my favorite X factor. Yeah. Because you know, all we hear about is the Isle of faces and how you can't go there. Or you're, you'll, you'll never come back. And, Howland Reed, and this is why, like, Howland Reed makes no sense. What, I mean, what, like, <laughs> his, there's no, there's, other than, like, maybe the Tower of Joy, but at least you could read the Tower of Joy and, like, what happens after at, like, face value, because clearly a lot of people in the realm does. But there's, but none of the Howland Reed stuff adds up. I mean, it's like, first of all, he is described as the chronic man by Mira Reed when she's telling the story of like what went down at the tourney at Heron Hall and all of this stuff. She never says my father. She never says my, she literally, if you go and read that passage, yeah. which we'll, which we'll get to, uh, I think in, you know, one of the upcoming brand chapters, she describes him as the chronic man. And it's so bizarre and weird. Then we learn that this chronic man has like chronic man magic. And this, he can go train at the Isle of Faces before he goes to Heron Hall. Think about that. He go, he does all of this training at this Isle of Faces, which is all these weirwood trees who are probably connected to Blood Raven. And he does all of this training there before he goes to the tourney at Heron Hall and then meets Ned Stark and Lyanna and Rhaegar and all these people. He goes there after he's successfully made his way to the Isle of Faces, which again, you're not supposed to be able to go to. And he then suddenly becomes like a wuss and can't fight these people that need Ned Stark to come stick up for him. Like it makes zero sense. Zero Liana, sense. Right. Lyanna Stark yeah. supposedly is an idol laughing tree and, and none of it, 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 it does not, none of it adds up. Helen Reed is the biggest mystery for me, maybe 
character-wise, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I would put Skagos Island up there <laughs> right behind him. So the way I look at it is it's not that surprising that Jojen is a really strange, uh, you know, demented kid almost. So maybe it is hereditary or maybe the reeds have just been chosen by, you know, Blood Raven or the Three-Eyed Crow, whatever we want to call him, uh, to, to be this vehicle for him to work all types of mischief within the realm. I, I, it's unclear. The story gets a little bit bigger, the myth, right? Because even like you think about nobody can find them yeah. uh, and, they, and they live in like, you know, the marsh and the, the and if you eat too many frogs, and... you get moss under your armpits. <laughs> Right. They live in gray water watch. I just imagine literally like a hut made out of leaves. That's on like an enormous lily pad. That's just like floating around like in because, the bayou of Louisiana. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's like on a raft that moves around or something. Like, I don't think it's nearly as like majestic as we sort of think, because it's like the Mormons only, they have like 50 people that they preside over. So gray water watch, it's about like 20, you know what I mean? Like, it can't be more. I doubt it's more than bear Island. I would say it's probably smaller than Bear Island. And this would be one of those times where, because we know a lot of things get kind of built up uh, in the myth and the legend. And, and a lot of it ends up being explained away, uh, kind of like Sansa's, you know, uh, prophecy of a giant kicking down the wall at Winterfell. And it turns out to be Sweet Robin kicking down her snow castle. It's like a subversion of a prophecy. I think that there are a lot of things that can be explained away. And that might be one of them, but it would be fitting. If the, it was a floating, mysterious city that no one can find because Howland Reed just happens to live there. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, the children of the forest, I feel, have to have some sort of connection to the reeds as well. Like, I've always felt that. I don't have a lot of empirical evidence about it, but it's just a gut feeling that somehow they're tied to them. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. But I will say that I do think Jojen and Mira are two very, very different people. Yeah, it's just it's odd. And of course, there's all the stuff about Mira because she's the same age as Jon Snow and she has you know, obviously the character they have play her in the show looks has like identical hair uh, yeah. to Jon. And then, of course, Howland Reed did something at the Tower of Joy. So even if it's the exact same thing we saw in the show, it still doesn't add up to what happens at Harrenhal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's able to at least fight for a little bit against King members of the King's Guard. Sure, they're outnumbered and everything, but but still, somehow, somehow he survives. You know what I mean? It's like, and then like, yeah, you could say it was two on one against Arthur Dane. It's like, well, Arthur Dane's fought a lot of probably two on ones, and won uh, all of all of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Arthur <laughs> Dane's so, like, I mean, top three all time, man. So uh, yeah, of course, I don't know that he k kills you know Arthur Dane in the in the books but yeah it's just it none of just none of it adds up and then of course he's just such a important character yeah and and you know for jojin he is the teacher that bran has now which bran finds out that he's about to have another very powerful teacher but in some ways isn't it interesting like we think about the the trope of the wizard or wizardress or witch or whatever kind of mentoring the young talented chosen one and you think about like moraine from wheel of time trying to be a teacher to ran or you think about gandalf trying to guide frodo and Jojen Reed is that stand in at this point, at least for Bran. And it's that we talk. I always talk about how this is a series that looks to subvert a lot of the tropes in fantasy, but also to have a conversation with it. And I think Jojen's a really good stand in for like the mentor character whenever in Oh, actually, I don't know if he knows everything that's going on either. And then we're going to get three eyed crow as a even more demented mentor. <laughs> you know, right. if Gandalf was bad. I would say three eyed crow is kind of that equivalent. So uh, I, I really enjoy the, the teacher student thing that's inspected here. And then we kind of get told that we're going to be looking out later for three eyed crow teaching brand even more stuff.